Hello, so in this video I'm going to give you my review on this printer here from Nova 3D. It's the Alfin 3 Mini 3D printer, a resin 3D printer of course. All right, let's get started. So I was sent this printer a few months ago now and I've had a chance to put it through its paces, check to see whether I like it and what I would change if I could change anything about this printer. If you like reviews, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you are notified the next time I post something like this. Right, let's jump straight into it. What do I like about this printer? Well, you know, quite simply, it does look really nice. For a printer that costs maybe £180 from Amazon, you're not going to get something that looks a lot better. It's sleek, it's curved, it's not just a blocky, square, cheap, easy to build type of machine. And that's a big one for me because especially if you've not got too many printers you want to choose one that looks nice on your side or if you're in an office environment this certainly would not look out of place against an apple mac for instance it looks nice secondly i like how the design of the printer itself is constrained see here slots nicely onto place and that limits the amount of smell that comes out of this machine which is another big one. Woof, got a, got a waft of it there, just from uh, lifting, lifting the uh, lid off. I do use a filter when I'm operating these printers, um, otherwise um, I would be wearing a mask. Anyway, so take that off and you'll see the constraint of the design continues. This build platform here locks nicely back against a flat blackboard and can then be tightened. So again, nicely constrained design. I printed this piece here, especially for this review video, as a lot of the stuff I print is, uh, can't really disclose it as it's for clients. So I'll whip it off now and show you the quality of this machine. On that note of printing for clients, I do think if you were to purchase this printer, you would certainly be able to recoup the cost at only 180 pounds. You don't have to do too many print jobs to have paid back that investment. I'm actually thinking on doing a 3D printing video based on how to make money with 3D printing and would love to know if anyone out there would like to see this. Run, baby, run. While I'm doing the cleanup, I will just point out a little bit of feedback I had from someone in my last video uh, who pointed out how this bolt here is actually below the max resin line, uh, which is a little bit annoying when it comes to cleanup as it means that the head of it does indeed fill with resin. Not a big thing, but always worth saying. That said, if you don't like cleanup, don't buy a resin printer. <laughs> Once the parts off the build plate, it's then for the fun of support removal. Can anyone guess what this is yet? Put it in comments if you know what the file is. So there you have it, as you can see, the support removal does take quite a long time. But you end up with a pretty cool looking piece. Um, this is water washable resin, and so I'm going to stick it in the ultrasonic cleaner now to finish it all off. Um, but uh, yeah, as you can see, the detail capable from this machine is pretty excellent. Of course, this is in a way the sort of biggest type of print you can get off the machine because resin printers do need quite uh, a lot of support material and that does because of the angles constrain the sort of 
overall volume that you actually get. So this model is about eight centimeters tall, just over three inches. So that's sort of the max size you'll get if you're looking at printing figurines, for example. But uh, that is the same for other printers in its class. It's just worth mentioning. So while that's cleaning up, I will continue to talk about what I do and don't like about this printer. Just thought I'd explain a little bit about my review style. I like to focus on what the printer does beyond the sort of standard printer in its class and then focus on what it doesn't do so well and where it could be improved as I feel those are the two things that you never really can tell from reading a product description for example. Obviously a printer should print and should produce models that it says it will and so that's sort of a given. I feel like most people want to know what it does beyond that and then what it doesn't do so you can make an informed decision as to whether this is the machine for you. So as I said, I like the constrained design. I like the way this printer looks. Uh, it prints quick, it's got a monochrome screen and so that should last a long time. But again, other printers in its class do have similar sort of specs there. Uh, I like the shape. I feel like it would be great for sort of putting it in an office corner or if you're limited on space rather than a square design. However, the downside of putting it in the corner is they've put the USB port on the back. So sort of uh, sort of cancels out that. Uh, if that could have been on the front, then it well, you know, would have been perfect for that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's it really in terms of what it does beyond its basic features. Uh, it does produce good prints and I don't think you'd be disappointed with this machine at all. Uh, it's also very easy to level the beds and I like the implementation that they've used with these four little screws that allow you to sort of tweak and get the bed nice and level which is never too hard to do on a small printer anyway but it does make it really easy so yeah that's the good things now on to shortcomings of the printer or what it doesn't do so well it doesn't have a HEPA filter, which a lot of these printers in this size range don't, but equally I think it should be safety first and I do think that should be included with all of these printers. Whether you have an external unit or not, it helps to get it right at the source, tackle the problem at the source and minimize those sort of bad fumes that you could be breathing in if you're using one of these machines. Another thing I don't like about this printer is that the interface doesn't allow you to edit the settings as you're printing. Some other machines in this class range do allow you to play and tweak the settings while it's going. For example, you might sort of feel like a uh, print's under curing in places and you want to up the exposure time or you might feel like it's pulling away a bit too quick and you're worried about a model breaking towards the end and you might want to tweak it while it's going and you're not able to do that with this machine. The UI interface in general is pretty awful. Uh, props, you know, credit where credit's due, they have developed their own uh, interface but if you're going to do it, do it properly. It doesn't really meet the mark. And this screen is just really not very responsive. And, you know, if you're pushing in the corners, you have to sometimes try about five or six times just to get it to tap the back button, for example. Um, so, for example, up here, it's right at the top of the back button is right at the top corner of the screen. And to get it, it's really difficult. you might find yourself using an implement to try and tap back or you might just give up so yeah that really does need work um, probably could be improved if the screen sat more flush with the face of the printer rather than sort of angling back because it means you really struggle to 
get access to either the, any of the sides, but equally, I think it's just not a very high quality touchscreen, and that does let the printer down because it's a bit of a frustrating user experience in that respect. Once the printer's on and going, I've not had any failed prints and it works really well, but it's, uh, it's a bit of a pain um, for what could otherwise be a really fantastic machine. Other than that though, functionally this printer does work very well. So it's sort of picking hairs, but equally it will probably annoy you. Well, it definitely will annoy you. So yeah. Another thing is the software of this printer. They do have a, uh, a Nova 3D, it's called Nova 3D Maker or something like that. But I looked uh, at a few forum posts and uh, no one was too complimentary of how good the software was. So I couldn't be bothered to try it. And I stuck to Cheaty Box, which is the normal slicing software that I use for resin printers. You can't use Cheaty Box straight out of the straight out of the packet. Unfortunately, you do have to download a plugin and I have a link to that in the description below. Uh, for me as a Mac user, it didn't work straight away um, and I had to make sure that I had Xcode installed so that that uh, installed all the necessary dependencies. Um, but yeah, uh, that's, that's often the, often the case when using these sort of proprietary softwares um, when you're a Mac user because they're often firstly developed for Windows and then ported over or whatever. So yeah, but it did get working in the end and then it worked like a breeze with Cheaty Box. So can't complain too much. Um, you just have to, to be mindful that there may be a little bit more faff there. So would I recommend this printer? That's the million dollar question. And to be honest, yes, I would. I think it looks good, which, you know, first impressions do mean for a lot. And that has probably made me be a little less harsh than I would normally be. For about 180 pounds, I do think it's quite a lot of bang for your buck. And I do think you would be able to make your money back if you had a clear vision of what you were going to make and sell with this printer. Don't just buy it thinking it's going to make you money, but if you have an idea of what you're going to do with it, then I certainly think that could be possible um, because in the grand scheme of things, 180 pounds is not too much. Could it be improved? Yes, it certainly could be. And I've explained what I think uh, would be the, the main things there. If it could work natively with G2 Box, that would be fantastic and just save people a lot of messing around. If this touchscreen well, was just even half decent, that would make the printer a lot better. Um, and if the USB stick could be put on the front, then that would again be much better. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do give it a like and consider subscribing. And a thank you if you are already subscribed. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions about this printer, you're considering buying it, or just want to say hi. See you next time. Cheers.